All right, what's going on everyone? Happy Monday. Hope everyone had an amazing weekend and kicking off the week right. Happy Father's Day to all my dads out there. I had a wonderful time with the fam here in Costa Rica. Uh, and, you know, excited for two more weeks. So two more weeks. We'll be live again from Costa Rica next week. Uh, actually live and then also um, live twice next week. So AI Unleashed. Uh, we'll be talking a little AI on Wednesday next week and we'll be live for our normal Monday uh, innovative seller. So uh, yeah, excited for that. So today's topic is one that I've talked about quite a bit, but I wanted to try to get a little bit more tactical with it today. Really just talking about the hidden costs of outdated metrics for your outbound strategy. It's like, you know, we all want the same thing, more meetings, more pipeline, but the metric that a lot of the times that we're tracking doesn't actually correlate to us doing that thing. And so what I'm gonna to try to do here today is give you all some tactics to rethink the kind of middle, right? So there's this like volume of activity over here, there's results over here, and then there's like these things that need to happen in the middle. And so I'm gonna talk about the overfocus on quantity, um, not that quantity to some extent doesn't matter, right? Like, you know, you can't just do like three activities and probably hit your numbers. I wish it was that easy. Um, talk about the hidden costs that are associated with those metrics. And then I'm gonna dive into how to evolve your metrics, you know, tactically. And I think, look, whether you're a rep watching this or you're a leader, I've got my notes up here if you're wondering one. Touching my screen here. Um, if you're a rep or a leader, look, this is for you the same, right? Because if you're a leader, you know, I, what I want a lot of you to think about, there's a lot of bugs here too. It's raining too, you might be able to hear that. Um, is you control yourself, man. Like don't let a leader's metrics, and trust me, like I get it. You're like, well, Jake, it sounds a lot easier than it maybe it is, but I'm telling you, like don't let a leader's metrics be your metrics. You need to understand your specific metrics. And so, you know, there's a way that you can do a hybrid. Maybe I'll get into some of that at the end. So I wanna talk about first this like over-focus on quantity. So if you're tuning in for the first time, you, maybe this is a new paradigm for you or a new kind of like interesting way to think about things. But if you think about when we started to think that volume equaled results, it really was from, a lot of this stemmed from, there's a book written called Predictable Revenue. A lot of you probably have read it. Um, and what it said is like, look, there's this like math. They call it like, you know, sales math, right? And sales math said, if I do this many activities equals this many meetings, this much pipeline, et cetera. And when this book was written, which was like based on data from like early 2000s, um, it kind of made sense, right? Because what happened is you had all the activity being done was customized. There was no bulk outreach. So it's like one-to-one -one activity. When an activity was happening, it was a quality activity. Somebody had to like customize the email. Um, they had to call, you know, customize the call. And so all the activities, as you raised volume, quality stayed basically the same, okay? Then if you think about, um, we started automating. We started doing these, use these like sales engagement platforms and instead of using them for templates, we started to just hit send all. And so what did that do? So now we've got different types of volume metrics. Some, it's, and, and the machine doesn't know. It's like, okay, this email's one for one. Like this was an automated email. This was a customized email. Just It just counts two. Right, so instead of saying, well, now I'm doing 100 activities where all my activities were quality, now it's 100 activities and like, it's a mess, right? It could be volume, it could be customized, and we don't really know. So um, it was okay before, candidly, that we focused on volume because volume equaled more meetings because all the activities were, uh, you know, quality activities. And so I want you to just think about that, right? Um, I don't think it was the goal of predictable revenue because the book was written before sales engagement platforms even existed. And so if you fast forward to today, we can't focus on just quantity. I wish it was that easy. It was easier. Or hey, if you're a rep out there or a leader and your team is doing, um, this is actually a good, I don't think I've ever said it this way. If your team is doing nothing but quality activities, you can actually focus on quantity because it's one-to-one, -one, right? It's like I'm doing quality activities and therefore if I increase the number, then the number should come out the back end. So I will caveat all of this to say, even if you're using a sales engagement platform, but your team is going in and making tweaks on everyone, then quantity could be still an interesting uh, 
you know, a metric for you. So let's talk about what this means for your team, like both like hidden costs and issues. So that's the, that's the issue with over-focus on quantity. It's that one, these are two very different types of activities. And then if I think about like other types of activities, like a post on LinkedIn or whatever it is, it gets even you know messier. Um, so the hidden costs. So number one is inaccurate metrics, right? Um, because calls and email volumes aren't always the best indicators of success. They're just not, right? Like I wish raw numbers were the indicator of success. They're just not. Um, and I think what happens is because we're so focused on this very tip top, it, it just is an easier metric as opposed to going to the next metric in, which we call meaningful conversations. Okay, meaningful conversations is, it, there's kind of two quick definitions and you can have whatever definition works for you and your team. But uh, what we usually will preach is you talk to somebody or you interacted and you're trying to get a meeting booked. That's a good, that's, that, that shows me. So if I can send 20 personalized videos and get that interaction, great. Or if I've got to do 100 calls to get there, great. So maybe I need to have three meaningful conversations a day. I'm, somebody responded to book meeting, someone responded to get me to the right person. They said, hey Jake, I'm not the right person, but I want you to set up time with Tim Henderson, right? So instead of focusing on volumes, focus on that. That alone will get you closer to this. And it, and it kind of mediates whether you're doing really high quality, high volume, et cetera, over here. The goal is like, look, we gotta have three of these conversations. Could be two, it could be five, just depends on your business, right? Um, some of our clients, it's five. Um, so again, think about meaningful conversations as the start versus raw volume. If you just start there, my friends, and for all my reps out there, you do the same thing. You know, you need to know like, hey, based on your strategy, what does it take to get those kind of like pre-meetings? You could call it pre-meeting too. <clears throat> We've always called it meaningful conversation, but you can do that. The other hidden cost is decreased team morale. Okay, how many of you out there right now are feeling defeated or feeling like, man, it's impossible, right? I'm telling you right now, SDRs and sales reps that are prospecting are feeling this at like an all time high. So for a lot of you out there, you know, if you want to decrease, if you want to decrease your turnover, you want to keep your people happy, then I'd highly suggest you moving to this as well too. And then the last but not least hidden cost is opportunity cost. Your team could be doing this amazing creative stuff. They could be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to, I saw Johnny, actually I'll steal this from a client. I was on site with a client last week. Uh, it's a long trip when you go from Santa Teresa, Costa Rica to Minneapolis in one day. I'll tell you all that. Um, but was on site uh, and, you know, he talked about, you know, Jake, what about the idea of sending a handwritten note when someone gets a new job or some shitty like LinkedIn congrats? I was like, great idea. Right. So the opportunity cost of you, it's the same eight hours in a day. OK, we've got the same eight hours to work, the same eight hours in a day. And so the opportunity cost of all the other things that I could be doing that are creative and interesting and, you know, people, you know, would be excited, you know, to write a handwritten note or to send a personalized video. I can't do that because I'm being forced to do all these volume based metrics. OK, so just think about that. It's like, you know, would you rather me? And I think like this is the part that is really I almost said like hurtful, but I would say it's like it's so illogical that it just it drives me a little crazy, <clears throat> which is. If I said, hey, hey, sales leader, I want the team to set, you know, a couple of one meeting a day or whatever it is. Do you care if they get there with, with 80 activities or 30? I think the most logical sales leaders would say, like, I don't really give a shit. Like, as long as they get there, they get there. But then we manage the team to, you know, 80. So just just understand your metrics. Right. So there's the opportunity cost that you're losing. Um, you know, of the cool stuff that you could be doing, which is a lot more fun and interesting as is. So, um, so metrics for success. Okay. I kind of gave you meaningful conversations, um, as, as a good one. Um, but again, it's just focus. I want you to focus on the quality of the outcomes. I think that's really what I want you to focus on is like, don't be so look and, and you know, it's interesting. Um, you know, we, we talk a lot about practice, right? Like, you know, you practice, 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 and then there's the, that's kind of like a volume of reps, repetitions you're getting. But there's a big difference between a, you know, quality repetition and just a, a, a random repetition. So think about, what would a good example, like a squat, for example, okay? Uh, or a push-up, right? I could do a push-up that's like, eh, you know, like a, a half-ass push-up, or I could do a real push-up, or I could do a half-ass squat, or I could do a real squat. Um, 
And so there, there, there is a big difference. It's like, I'm not trying to get a hundred squats. I'm trying to make like my physical fitness better or my legs stronger. Right. And, and I think that's kind of the mindset. So whether you're into the gym or not, like you could think about, I'm trying to, you know, I don't know, bake a hundred cookies or I'm trying to bake like a hundred really good cookies, not bake as many cookies as possible if you love cookies. Um, but again, so we've got to focus on quality. And again, I'm okay that you have some ideas of quantity. That, that, that's not the end of the world. But at the end of the day, it's about what produces outcomes, right? Like that's what we all want is outcomes. So we've got to focus on quality and getting outcomes, not just quantity. And so you can think about things like, even if we think about reply rates, right? Instead of tracking reply rates, you know, use a tool like Outreach uh, where you can track positive reply rates, right? Like, so there's different leading indicators that you could have like, hey, we know we need, you know, whether it's call disposition or email, we need four positive dispositions a day. Great, that, that's a good metric as well too. Um, think about sequence step performance, okay? So think about like, okay, we know that if we can get all of our sequences to step seven and, and that we you know, have a much higher likelihood of that sequence being successful with a prospect. Well, great, now I can track how many of my sequences got to step seven, right? And then types of content, like what content is actually converting? Like, hey, calls converted 3x more. So for the next sequence, let's put in this data. So, so the metrics you might track are like, hey, we need two meaningful conversations or three meaningful positive dispositions a day. Uh, we need um, you know, all of the sequences getting to step seven that are eligible. And um, we're gonna start to test more calls because it's working more, right? And leveraging tech, I'll put a link in here. If you guys have not checked out what our team is doing with Performance Pulse, it is bonkers, right? Like. It's so funny, like a lot of these tools, like Outreach, Sales Loft, Apollo, Gong now. You might hear some geckos in the background. It's raining, as it always is here in Costa Rica during this time of year. Um, is a lot of these tools are focused on kind of showing you now like pipeline metrics, which is great. Like that data is like awesome. But what we've done is built like a cockpit for your outbound. Like if you wanna know what step in the sequence is working, what's my number one sequence, what steps converting like in real time without having to do 60 clicks, Performance Pulse will help you do that. And it's why we developed the product. Like we just consistently found that although our partners were, um, you know, doing great work on the analytics, they weren't focused on what actually converts. And so that's where Performance Pulse comes in. So go just check it out, forward it to your leader, DM me, DM uh, Brianna Dunbar, uh, Dunbar to Mike from our team. And, um, you know, we're happy to set some time up and talk to you about it. But either way, you know, I want you to just think about those metrics uh, overall. So we've got a couple questions that have come in too that I'll take. Um, how can companies transition from outdated metrics to more relevant ones? Uh, really great question here. So um, how can you transition? So step one is focus on that mean, that po either po you could call it positive disposition, meaningful conversation. Think of something that would encourage my people to focus on something that's a little bit closer to that first outcome, not just raw activity. And, and, and another thing you can do is don't just reward raw activity. Hey, Jake made 500 calls today, yeah, killing it. But, you know, who cares? You know, we've got a client right now, they use Outreach, for example, and, you know, we're looking at the data with them and they're like, yeah, like these people that are doing the highest activities aren't the like top performers and it's like, Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. So just, just think about some of those things, everyone. Like, you know, just start picking another metric that's not volume, that's like a step closer, whatever that makes sense for you. Uh, what are the first steps in implementing a quality over quantity approach uh, in outbound? So I think the, the first step is establish a realistic kind of meeting set target, okay? Like, hey, based on our data, we think the average team can get 12 meetings a month, right? Or 15, let's just say that. So. You know, that would be about, what, 12 would put me at three meetings a week, um, or let's, let's bump that up, let's go 16. Let's go four meetings a week, less than one a day, right? So make sure you have a realistic number. Look at the data, like don't pick some stupid ass number that's like completely unrealistic, like that demotivates everybody. So let's say the number is 16, right? Okay, four meetings, it's one meeting a day, great. How many people do we need to interact with, right? And, and, and again, like have a meaningful conversation with, not just prospects touch, Right? I think we've got to move away from this idea that account coverage matters more than results. It doesn't, right? Account coverage is great, but if it's not yielding results, then who gives a shit, right? So that would be my first steps. Establish a very realistic meeting set goal or pipeline generated goal, depending on what you KPI on, and then kind of work back the math toward that meaningful conversation. 
Um, all right, we've got one more here. Um, can you share examples of companies that have successfully revamped their outbound strategies? Yes. Um, so again, with a lot of our, like, um, we've got a client right now, a private equity backed company doing 20 plus million a year. And um, we just added calls into the mix because we've been seeing that historically. And they kind of went, you know, they went to one extreme. They're like, okay, we're gonna be doing 80 calls and 80 emails a day. And it's like, no. The data actually says if we do 80, like, I think it was like 65 or 80 or somewhere in that range, I can't remember, better activities and allow the team more time will convert. And literally within the course of a month, that team is already, I think, I don't even remember what their, their stats are right now, but they're generating like 3x more meetings. So by kind of moving them off the quality metric, like they're already like outperforming. So um, my guess, my look, here's what, here's what I would do if I was a rep. I would just start to run the play I'm talking about, let my boss worry about this over here, do some volume stuff so they're happy, and then just go show the results. Because I'm telling you, if you don't make this switch, you're gonna be in trouble. Um, so that's what I got for everyone today. I hope this is a helpful like conversation. Start to look at the, at the end of the day, we all want the same thing. We wanna generate more meetings, get more prospects in the top of the funnel, but you can't keep focusing on volume. I wish, I wish you could, like I said, you can actually, again, I'll backtrack. You can keep focusing on volume if all of your activity is high quality activity. There you go, you can. But if you're asking people to hit send all and you've got a podge podge of activities and it's like eight different things, you can't because it's not one to one. It's not the same volume you're tracking, right? So just think about that, right, as a part of this. So go, and also, oh, last thing, go check out Performance Balls. Um, definitely go check it out because I think if you're a company you're like, Jake, I wanna get better, I wanna understand those leading indicators, it's gonna help you get there like week one. So go check out what we're doing there. Set it up, you know, DM me, set up time with the team and we'll get you hooked up. Uh, and then make sure, uh, tune in Wednesday, um, not this Wednesday, actually I just realized, not this Wednesday, next Wednesday, I'll be live. Uh, first AI unleashed from uh, Costa Rica. So that should be a lot of fun. Um, you know, talking about, actually a lot of really big trends have been going down around AI. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about ChatGPT 4.0, some of the things that you need to know there too. So I hope that helps. Please, please, please rethink tracking volume as your leading indicator. I promise you, if you are missing numbers, this one thing can change that for you. So enjoy. I'm going to go hang out for a little bit. Looks like the rain's starting to subside. Uh, have a great rest of your week, everyone, and I'll see you next week.